My name is Red Boot, and this is a playthrough of Pendragon, The Fall of Rome and Britain, designed by Marc Guyon Reti from the GMT coin series, which was designed by Volko Runke. And before we start today, there's a couple of things I want to clear up. One is an error that I made on the last turn, and that is in Ordowickes. When I plundered the hill fort there, I actually took the plunder from the countryside, that is to say from the Ordowickes tile, rather than from off board, which was not correct. So, and I should have taken two plunder from the hill fort. Um, so I'm gonna put one plunder uh, back to make, um, for the two plunder that I should have taken from off board, and I'll place one plunder back onto the countryside. So I wanted to clear that up. Now the second issue is a little bit more substantive. I've sort of made an executive decision here. It, it occurred to me as I was editing the last video that uh, if I'm going to run through all 78 cards, or at least 72 of them, uh, uh, almost to the end, it's going to take me forever to do that. So uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this series into the barbarian conspiracy th scenario. Uh, because I, I think if I actually try to get through all of those cards, it's just going to take too long. So uh, that changes the that doesn't change the setup at all. It changes the victory conditions substantially. Uh, primarily, uh, doesn't change the Dukes and Kibitates victory conditions, but it uh, substantially changes the uh, victory conditions for the Scotty and the Saxons. Uh, primarily because they don't have as long to. Uh, catch up and build up renown, which is really what the victory conditions in this series are all about. So uh, the other thing is that we're not going to use the um, pivotal event cards because they're not used in that scenario. So I hope you all don't mind, but I, this series was probably going to end up running about 18 or 20 vid uh, videos, and I think that was just that's just too much. So uh, this is the way we're going to play it. So the next thing we do is uh, we move on to the gameplay. And with that, we look at the Anirum card. Now the eligible factions right now are the Scotty and the Saxons. So the Scotty are going to go first. They're not going to use the card. And my die roll was too large to have them do a return command. So uh, the next thing they're going to do is a, uh, is a raid. And... I figured out already where they're going to raid, and they are going to raid with Ransom because there are no more uh, inviting targets inland from the, the points where I've raided, so uh, they are going to raid with Ransom. And they are going to do that in uh, Demetai. Decangli. Karwetii, and finally Wotadini. So we'll start in Demetai. Now these are all going to be two die four raids because I rolled a four uh, on the raid bot um, chart. So the first raid in Ordowickes, uh, excuse me, in Demetai is going to be only two Scotty Raiders. So that makes this fairly simple. We'll place two Scotty Raiders in Demetai. We'll take two plunder from the countryside, excuse me, one plunder from the countryside because it's limited by population. And obviously there's not going to be a battle because two Scotty Raiders is not going to be enough to take over the militia and the hill fort, even in the hills. So with that, we move right to a roll for Ransom. So remember the Ransom die roll is a 1d6 and it has to be a 4 to 6 and it is a 2. 
So there is no ransom in Demetai, and the Demetai uh, portion of this is finished. So we'll remove the pawn in Demetai and move the camera up to the next area, the region, which is Dekangli. Dekangli will do a two die four roll. And this is a little bit different this time. We've got a four and a two. So they will raid with six raiders in Dekangli. So we'll move six Scotty raiders into Dekangli. And because the population is two, they will take two plunder. And I don't think there's going to be a battle here either. They are in a fort. So that's correct. Six is not even close to enough to challenge three cavalry. Um, there, two of them, only two of them would be able to withdraw into the fort because the holding capacity of a fort is only two. So there would be a field battle likely killing off my cavalry and two of their raiders, leaving four raiders to take the hill fort, and that wouldn't be enough to assault the hill fort. So there will be no fight in Dekangli either. So let's check out the ransom. So the ransom roll is a six, which means that it is successful. And that means that the Scotty We'll take a resource from the Britons, moving them down to 31, 33, and we'll move up to 10. Keeping in mind, by the way, that we have now taken, Scotty have now taken three plunder, and we'll assess that at the end of the full phase. So we have finished with Deck Hangley, and we will move now to the next, which is Karwaiti. So Karwaiti will roll two die four, and we have four raiders coming into Karwaiti. And the four raiders will take one plunder because they're limited by the population, and in this case, they're also limited by the amount of plunder that's even available in Karwaiti. So we'll put that up there. And Let's see, will there be a fight in Karwaiti? The cavalry would escalate and destroy three, so no, the, uh, uh, there would be, actually the cavalry would escalate and destroy four, so uh, no, there will be no fight in Karwaiti. So we'll make our ransom die roll, and it is a four, which is successful, so there will be a ransom in Karwaiti. And that means that the Britain resources goes down to 32 and Scotty Renown goes up to 11. And last but not least is Wotadini. And Wotadini's two die four is six. So six Scotty Raiders will move into Wotadini. They will not take any plunder because there is no plunder available. However, they've already taken out one hill fort and there's only one hill fort to surviving in Wotadini. So let's take a, a closer look and see if they will actually battle. So there will also be no battle in Wotadini because the cavalry and one of the militia can withdraw withdraw into the hill fort, there would be a field battle with the other militia, which would uh, it be itself destroyed, but also destroy one raider, leaving five raiders to attack the hill fort with two units in it, which would not be quite sufficient in order to take the hill fort. And that's because in the escalade step, uh, there'd be too many raiders taken out to actually be successful on the assault step. So there will be no attack in Wotadini. So we'll take these two last white pawns off the board. And let's check on Ransom in Wotadini. The Ransom die roll is a six. So once again, the Ransom is successful. And that will move Britain resources down to 32 and Scotty Renown up to 12. 
And that's the end of the Scotty turn. So there's plenty of Scotty Raiders on board. Plunder has been taken. Uh, it is actually one, two, three, four plunder. So uh, what that means is that prosperity will fall from 51 to 47 and prosperity plus prestige will fall to 49. And the Scotty have taken a command plus feet, which means that the Saxons can take a, the event or a limited command, but of course in this case, since it's the bots, it can take a full of, uh, command and, and um, feet. So the Saxons go next on the Aniran card. They're fourth, and they're not going to take the event because as you can see, it's got a raven silhouette behind it. So they're not going to take the event. And that means they're going to take a command plus feet. And having uh, rolled for this, it's actually going to be quite interesting because they're going to take a march command with a settle feet. And this is very interesting because the one place that they have where they can do a um, settle command is in Kantiaki. And that's going to build them up quite a bit and allow them to march into Londinium. So um, what I've sort of figured out here is you're going to get uh, three warbands added to... Kantiaki for a total of eight. And then we have to leave behind enough pieces to continue to dominate Kantiaki, which is uh, three pieces total. The other five will march, and the best place for them to march in terms of the place with the least troops is into Londinium. Now, they don't take control of Londinium because remember, even though they have numeric superiority in Londinium, they don't have a fortress, and the fortress is required in any region, but in particular in a city, uh, the, a, a fortress is king, and so they're going to have to take that fortress in order to take Londinium. But that is a dire development for the Britain player, because the Saxons have entered Londinium on their turn. And that is going to be their turn. So we'll move to the next card, which is the Shades of Bodica card. And we, we turn over the Gavissa card. Gavissa? Gavissa? Not sure if it's Germanic or not. So we'll call it Gavissa. Uh, and on the Shades of Bodica card, we see that the Kiwitate's player is the first player. So let's go ahead and move the Scotty and Saxons to ineligible and move the Kiwitates and Dux players to eligible and let's make some decisions about what we're going to do with the Kiwitates. One thing I need to do though before I get too far down the road is I need to charge the Scotty for the amount of renown that they uh, made for the four 2d4 attacks. So uh, there were four, so they're going to move from 12 down to four. Now, having re-geared this a little bit because of the change to the barbarian conspiracy scenario from the full scenario, I've looked at the victory conditions and remember that I'm playing the Kibitates and the Dukes, and so we will take the worst performing of those two at the end if there's no immediate victory uh, by a party, uh, which currently is the Dukes. Uh, the Dukes are at, I think, negative 11, whereas the uh, Kiwitates are still at plus 4. And we will compare that to the worst of the two for the Scotty and the Saxons, which according to my current calculation is a Scotty at about minus 14. So what we need to avoid over the next 10 cards or so is a Scotty resurgence in renown that uh, surpasses the Dukes. 
if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. So what does that mean for the kiwi tantes? Well, the kiwi tantes really need to sort of help the ducks, if you will, and probably try to bring down as many Scotty as possible uh, to limit the amount of plunder that is taken in a turn uh, and to somehow and to and to limit Scotty renown as much as possible. Um, so I'm thinking that uh, as an initial part of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a muster command to you, uh, bring back as many of these Kibitantes troops as possible because we've lost quite a few, uh, even though we haven't lost any Dukes yet except one fort from a card action in uh, Kantiaki. So I'm going to muster, and I think I'm going to probably use the rule command to... I uh, haven't quite decided yet, but what I'm thinking is I'm going to use the rule command to bring that refugee back into uh, the population for the price of five resources, um, which is a pretty high price, but um, I'd, I'd like to do that rather than uh, losing it um, completely at the end of the game. So with that in mind, uh, the first place I'm going to uh, recruit or muster is Demetai because there is a hill fort there and one population so I should be able to re to muster two militia in that area and it is an area with Scotty Raiders so with a little bit of luck we'll be able to flush out those Scotty Raiders in a battle command at some later point. The second place I'm going to muster is going to be Deck Angley Although there's no hill fort there as a muster point, I can put in two per uh, population if I control the region, which I do. And I want to give those cavalry, Dukes cavalry, a hand if we get a chance to take out some of that, um, uh, some of those Scotty Raiders in the north there. I'm also going to do a muster in Wotadini. Uh, again, because there's a hill fort there and two populations, so I should be able to get some pretty good leverage up there in terms of the number of pieces. So let's go through those at first and kind of see how things go. So first of all, I need to take down my resources by six. So we'll move the resources from 31 down to 25. So we're going to get two militia in Demetai one for the hill fort and one for the population. In Deck Angley, we're going to get two militia, uh, zero for the hill fort since there isn't a hill fort, and two for the population. In Wotadini, we will get three militia one for the population and two, a uh, two for the population and one for the hill fort. Finally, in Koryal Tawi, we're going to uh, use the refugees to move the population back up from one to two. With the rule, uh, rule feet. And that costs five resources, so we'll move our resources from 25 to 20. And that'll be the end of the Kiwitate's turn. And so, uh, since the Kiwitate's took a command plus feet, the Dukes can take a limited command or the event. And uh, I don't think they're going to take the event because the event says place uh, Saxon Federati in Ikeni or Trinawantes three warbands and if none there one settlement and at the moment there's not a strong reason to reinforce Icani or Trinawantes except the off chance that um, well not the off chance but except for the possibility that they'll be raided and their plunder taken uh, I'm going to take a chance because I'd rather do a uh, intercept command as a limited command so because this is a limited command, we can only do an intercept in one region. So I've chosen Deck Angley because there are six raiders and two plunder there. And we should be able to get rid of all of that. 
and it's not going to cost us any resources because the fort in Deck Hangley, uh, sorry, the cavalry is already in Deck Hangley. Um, the other advantage of Deck Hangley is that it's clear, and so the possibility of an evasion or an ambush is very slight. And in fact, what the battle tactics say is that um, there being a battle in Deck Hangley, uh, they will attempt to evade, and they can only evade by rolling a six. So the first thing we'll do is we will assess two resources against the Dukes, moving Britain resources down to 18. And then, now let's take a roll and hope that we don't roll a six. So here's the evasion roll, and it is a one. And since there are three cavalry and six raiders, the raiders will be wiped out. Their plunder removed and moved back into the pool. We'll take that pawn and that will be the end of the Duke's turn. So the Kiwitates have taken command and a feat. The Dukes have taken the limited command. Those are done, so we'll put the Scotty and the Saxons back it to eligible and move the other two down to ineligible. And let's see what the next card brings. So the Gavissa card moves on to the discard pile. And the next card to come up is Feeding the Ravens. It appears the Saxons are first, but will probably not take the Gavissa card uh, because it's not a shield card and they probably, my guess will be they might raid they might do battle in London in Londinium as well but let's see what the bot says so in the grand scheme of things uh, always trying to prove me wrong the Saxons actually are going to take the event because when we got through the bot we went through the bot um, the uh, at the bottom of the bot, if you roll a five or a six on a possible raid, uh, you actually take the event unless it's a raven event. And since that is what happened, I rolled a six. Um, we're going to take this tribal war event, and what that means is uh, we're going to remove two process. And this is actually pretty tough uh, on the on the on the militia, especially actually after having done a, a muster command on the Kibitantes. We remove two prosperity each and two pieces total, other than cavalry or forts, strongholds last, from Dobuni uh, and uh, Catalawani. So two prosperity each from Dobuni will be removed, and from Catalawani, one, two. In addition to that, we remove five pieces, strongholds last. So uh, we're going to remove two militia and two militia and put them back into available forces. And uh, based on a random die roll, we're going to remove the town at Catalawani. And that's pretty rough. <laughs> uh, and since four prosperity were removed, move up here. And we'll see the total prosperity goes from 47 to 43, and prosperity plus prestige goes from 49 to 45. That reminds me uh, that Duke's prestige should have gone up after the uh, successful intercept in Dick Hangley. So we'll move prosperity plus prestige to 46, and we'll move Duke's Prestige up to three. Sorry about that, mistake. And so the Saxons took the event, which means that the Scotty would take a command plus feet. So the Scotty go next, and uh, they on the Gavissa card, and because they have 15 or more raiders on the map, they are going to do a return command, and the feat is likely going to be settled, uh, but I need to 
check that out and uh, come back and verify that. So yes, indeed, we are going to do a return command and then we are going to do a settle command in Carwaiti. So we have, um, let me pan this out a little bit. We have six Scotty Raiders in uh, Wotadini with no plunder. In Karwaiti, we have one plunder, moving Renown up to five. I'm going to leave those four there because we're going to be using those to possibly convert to warbands. In Order Wickes, we have three plunder. Move those Scotty back. In Cornoe, we have two plunder. Move those Scotty back. And in Demetai, we have one plunder. Move those Scotty back. So we have a total of seven plunder. Already moved one up. So six more. That moves Scotty Renown up to 11. And now we will do, we'll take a look at Karwaitii again. And in Karwaitii, we have four raiders that will try to convert into warbands. I'd like the militia in Wotadini to take on the warbands ultimately in Nawantai. So I'm going to move four over to Nawantai from Wotadini, which is going to take two resources. So that's going to move Britain resources down to 12. Now that's going to shift control in Nawantai over to back to Britain control from Scotty control which is going to move the Britain control marker up from 30 to 31. And then I can add a feat to this uh, command. So I'm going to add the invite uh, uh, feat here in Durotriges. So I'm going to place uh, three Saxon warbands in Durotriges with a Federati marker and place a settlement there. Again, I'm not worried about enhancing Saxon presence at this point. If for some reason that converted into, if there was a revolt and that converted into a Saxon settlement, because I believe that the Scotty are my, uh, are what I want to damage the most in terms of the victory conditions. So I'm going to place those there with the idea of moving into Dumno, uh, Dumnonii uh, a little bit later to take that over uh, as well as possibly up into Cornoe. And actually having just said that, I think I'll do that now. I'm going to take two militia from Decangli and move them down to Cornoe for two resources, moving me from 12 to 10 and taking control back over of the Cornoe region after it was raided. And that's going to move Britain control up two because there's two population there from 31 to 33. So that ends the Kiwitate's turn. We'll shift the eligibility markers and we'll move on to the next card. Now we know that the next card is Niall's Raid. So we'll move that down to the discard pile, and we'll flip over the next card, which is Mirden, which is a shield event for all four factions. And it looks like the Dukes and the Kiwitantes are going to get the first crack at it, so that'll be interesting. But in the meantime, we're going to deal with Nial's raid, and the Scotty go first. So having gone through the bots, I've determined that there is going to be a raid for both the Scotty and for the Saxons. 
Uh, and I'm not going to, uh, uh, this video is running a little bit long right now, so I'm not going to run through each raid. Uh, there'd be raids in seven regions, four for the Scotty and three for the, um, uh, three for the, uh, Saxons. And, uh, there is enough, I just wanted to check, there is enough renown available for them to do all of those. So I'm just, uh, I'm just going to show you the results of those raids and not run you through each of the seven regions individually. So I'm going to run through them off camera and then run through them, the results with you. So the Scotty did four raids, all with a different assault. The Tex Awarity raid was a 2d4 raid and it resulted in four raiders taking two plunder and uh, no battle because there were there's uh, not enough to take either the town or the fort after the withdrawal. In Noantai, five raiders came in and took one plunder, and there's no battle because there's no possibility of assault because there's no hill fort or town there. In Dobuni, I don't recall how many raiders came in. Um, oh, it was three raiders came in, and there was a town there that was undefended, and they ended up battling and assaulting and taking the town at the loss of one unit. So they took, and they took two plunder because there were two population. And then uh, I was quite bloody in Solares where there were, uh, I believe, uh, seven uh, raiders. And the seven raiders after the Dukes retreated one unit into the fort and one unit into the town with the militia. The raiders took the fort, the uh, fort that was defended by one Dukes cavalry, and ended up creating a casualty and an additional fort offline. Uh, Dukes' prestige fell precipitously to zero, and that got reflected in the Prosperity plus prestige number there up at the top of the board. And I've done the bookkeeping in terms of the Scotty and Saxon, and I've, uh, I've done the Saxon, and I'll explain that in, the, in a moment. But the Scotty and Saxon bookkeeping in terms of the renown that they've spent on this has been spent. So the Scotty, uh, rather the Saxon raid was fairly bloody as well. In Regni here, uh, there were four raiders and not enough raiders to battle. So uh, they ended up, uh, and this, by the way, was with surprise. There was a surprise in Trinowantes, Trino although the coup de main was unsuccessful. So there's no ravage here. They took two plunder and had four raiders come in. In Kantiaki, where so many of the, uh, there were a number of raiders that came in along with the uh, war bands that were in the settlement, and they were able to take the town of uh, Dura Wernum and do some casualties on one of the Dux units and uh, there's a little bit left over there but they now have full control of that region oh, they had control of the region but they now are the sole occupants of that region and then in Trinowantes up above there was also a battle there were I believe six raiders that came in took two plunder and ended up taking the town up there which is known as Walden Castle. So uh, that was fairly bloody as well. There's still no control of that region for the Saxons because there's still a stronghold with militia there. But um, other than that, it was a pretty devastating turn for the Britons. Uh, hopefully they will be able to withstand the onslaught as we move through the last few cards. So I will tell you that as of now, uh, it is the Dukes with the lowest tabulation on the score. So, um, uh, so if the game ended now, which of course it won't, but if the game did end now, they would end with uh, tw minus 29 points, uh, whereas the Scotty would end with minus 19 points, and both the Saxons and the Kibitate, Kibitates would uh, end with more than that. So uh, as of right now, the... Uh, the winning side is going to be the Barbarians, but hopefully we'll be able to 
pick up some slack here. That was a pretty bad turn in terms of plunder uh, that was taken. Some of the richer regions down in the southeast there that hadn't been touched for quite a while were, t uh, were attacked and plunder, quite a bit of plunder was taken. And that's really what uh, brought down the prosperity so low. And prosperity, of course, affects the Dukes very directly in terms of their prosperity plus prestige score. And that's what is so low and why they're at negative 29 right now. So join me next time. Uh, we're getting down to the last few cards. Uh, we will switch over to the Mirden card next. Go ahead and do that now. Off, well, just on camera. And the next card is going to be the Dal Rada card. So we'll put that into the top of the play deck. And until next time, so take care. Thank you for joining.